any amount, even if it's a pure shell company, which means no business, no profits, just an amount is received from its parent company, which is registered in a tax haven, and that amount is given to a political party. So one of my arguments, my Lord, I have three main arguments which I am going to argue before your Lordship against these electoral bonds. The first is that it defeats the people's right to be informed about the sources of funding of political parties, which in my respectful submission and in the light of several judgments of this court, is a fundamental right of citizens under Article 19.1a. That's the first argument. Because right to information has been held to be a fundamental right under Article 19.1a. In fact, in that ADR judgment and then in the follow-up PUCL judgment, this court said that Every citizen has a fundamental right to know about the assets and liabilities of every candidate, about the criminal antecedents. And when that was sought to be overcome by means of an amendment, that amendment was struck down on this precise ground. Okay, that's the first submission. What is the second? That's the first. Second is that this opaque instrument, anonymous instrument, in fact, promotes corruption in the country because there is good reason to believe, and I'll show my Lord why, that these bonds are being given by way of kickbacks. Kickbacks to parties in power. Almost all the bonds have been received only by parties in power. More than 50% have been received only by the ruling party at the center. And the rest have been received only by the ruling party in the states. Virtually nothing, not even 1% has been received by opposition parties which are not ruling in the center or at the states. And virtually all the bonds have been purchased by corporates, by companies, because they are almost all of denomination of 1 crore and above. 95% are in the denomination of 1 crore. 1 crore. Therefore, my Lord, and you have simultaneously amended the, you have amended the, you have removed the cap on corporate donations and amended FCRA. All right, that's the second submission. That's the second submission. The third, the third submission is, my Lord, that it, it disturbs and indeed destroys democracy in this country. Because it uh, does not allow a level playing field between political parties which are ruling versus political parties which are in opposition or between political parties and independent candidates. It will have, in fact, my Lord, uh, just to give your Lordship a small figure, in the last five years, of which since the electoral bonds were introduced, 2017 they were introduced, 17, 18 to 21, 22, five years? Five years. The contribution to political parties by way of electoral bonds has far exceeded any other method of contributing to political parties. Not only that, the amounts are so large, just take one party, the ruling party at the center. The contributions by way of electoral bonds to just this one party ruling at the center is more than 5,000 crores in just a period of less than five years. Now just look at that figure. The limit for spending on each candidate fixed by the legislature is less than one crore per Lok Sabha constituency, less than one crore. If you set up candidates in all the constituencies 
in the country, the total amount that can be spent by the political by, by the candidates of any political party is less than 500 crores in a Lok Sabha election. In just these five years, one party which has received the bulk of the political funding by way of electoral bonds is getting more than 10 times more than 10 times the maximum permissible expenditure on elections by its candidates. More than 10 times. So just see, my Lord, what this is doing to our democracy. What is the maximum permissible limit for a candidate? Lakh. 70 lakhs or so. Parliamentary constituency. 70 lakhs. Of course, my Lord, this, this limit is not there to. We all know that because candidates are spending 10 times, sometimes 100 times, 100 times the amount in cash. Now, Election Commission says, though it's a corrupt practice, spending more than the limit is a corrupt practice, but Election Commission says, Look, we can't catch them. Everybody knows that many candidates are spending many times by cash. One of the arguments in this for introducing electoral bonds was, the stated argument of the government was, that, well, this goes through the bank. These, these, these electoral bonds can only be purchased through bank transactions by check draft or direct transfer. Therefore, it will reduce cash. That was their argument. But, I mean, very simple. If you wanted to curb the role of cash in elections, all that you had to do was to pass a simple amendment saying, no political party or candidate shall be allowed to spend or take any money through non-banking channels. Everything will have to go through banking channels. And if you do that, it will be a corrupt practice. Suppose such an amendment, when this note ban was brought to Lord, one of the objectives given, stated objectives of the government was that we want to make a cashless economy. Because we want the role of cash to be reduced. Now, I can understand that ordinary person on the street can't be made cashless. He can't be expected to do all his transactions through check and banking channels, but political parties and candidates contesting elections, they could have been made cashless by this simple law saying that you have to, or if you are a candidate or if you are a political party, all your transactions have to be through banking channels. But that was not done. All right. Now, Mr. Bushin, let's do this. Let's look at the scheme of the electoral bond. Yes. And then you can make your submission. Yes. We've, we've seen the amendments which have been made. I fought the election in 2014 and it was 70. Today, whether it's 95 or 75 for a parliamentary constituency. Uh, how much? 95. 95 or 75, depending on the state. For example, mm -hmm. Andhra Pradesh is 95. Arunachal is 75. And for state elections, it's 40 and 28. Was so out of uh, when you do you have to maintain a separate account for all this? Uh, open yes. a, yeah. every candidate every has day, been every day, mothers, we have to submit what we have spent every day. Every candidate as well as every political party. Yeah, they could. Yes. And so this the election is election. the conduct of election rules, rule 90 gives this data so that your logic set them. Just one last thing I wanted to show the amendment in the FCR, just for your lordship's clarity. That is at page. 10 at the bottom of page 10. So earlier, my lord, foreign source included. Three is a foreign company. And uh, by this amendment at page 11, my lord, it said provided proviso at the bottom of that highlighted part, provided that where the nominal value of the share capital is within the limit specified under FEMA, 
or rules or regulations made there under then notwithstanding the nominal value of the share capital of a company being more than one half of such value at the time of making the contribution such such company shall not be a foreign source so if you are a subsidiary of a foreign company and you own even 100 percent of the shares of your subsidiary provided it is within fema it's not regarded as a foreign source so even the subsidiary of a foreign company can now donate to political parties that's why this is important actually this was a whole slew of amendments brought almost together 2016 and 2017 it's a bouquet and by this bouquet because that limit has also been removed therefore my lord it's allowing allowing shell companies also to donate earlier shell companies could not have because there was a limit seven and a half percent now shell companies can also donate you can set up you have a foreign company which is in a tax haven you set up a subsidiary here as a shell company and through that you buy electoral bonds and donate to a political party and nobody comes to know that a foreign company is now financing this political party or these companies are financing this particular political party etc now my lord we have mentioned the salient features of the scheme here at the bottom of page 11 but i can show your lordship the scheme itself which is in volume 4 page 118 Volume 4, page 118. But I have mentioned all the salient features even in the written submissions. <clears throat> Electoral bond means a bond. I am now reading the scheme. Page 118, electoral bond means a bond issued in the nature of a promissory note which shall be a bearer banking instrument and shall not carry the name of the buyer or the pay. It's like cash. Only difference is that it's a cash which can go up to 1 crore. It's a note which can go up to 1 crore, from 10,000 to 1 crore. Today, my lord, we have only notes of 500 rupees or less. Even 2,000 rupees has now been demonetized. But here, it's 10,000 to 1 crore. 1,000 to 1 crore. 1,000 to 1 crore. Now, <clears throat> eligibility for purchase of Three, eligibility for purchase and encashment of electoral bond. The bond under the scheme may be purchased by a person who is a citizen of India or incorporated or established in India. So it can be an individual or a company. A person being an individual can buy bonds either singly or jointly with other individuals. Three, only political parties registered under 29A of the RP Act and have secured not less than 1% of the votes polled in the last general election to the House of People or the Legislative Assembly, as the case may be, shall be eligible to receive the bond. So this itself restricts it to only those parties, not all parties are eligible, those who have received at least 1% vote, either in the Lok Sabha or in the State Assembly. The, the bond shall be encashed by an eligible political party only through a bank account with an authorized bank. Denomination that the, the bond should be issued in the denomination shall be issued in the denomination of 1000 to 1 crore. Validity of the bond, the bond shall be valid for 15 days from date of issue and no payment shall be made to any pay political party if the bond is deposited after the expiry of the validity period. I might just point out, my lord, on occasions they have increased the validity period under this also. And then, four, the information furnished by the buyer 
shall be treated as confidential by the authorized bank and shall not be disclosed to any authority for any purposes except when demanded by a competent court or upon registration of a criminal case by law by, by any law enforcement agency so acha it's all right it's all not, not so important right so therefore uh, uh, this has to be treated as confidential by the state bank this information about who has purchased the bonds and it can be disclosed only to a law enforcement agency which is pursuing some investigation but i am saying my lord that if at all anybody at one point the government had said and this court by one interim order has also recorded that there is at least some transparency in this because the company which purchases it has to disclose because the political party which receives it has to disclose not the identity but has to disclose how much bonds they have to disclose how much they have purchased the company has to disclose the party has to disclose how much they have received total they say you can do some mix and match and find out who has donated now mix and match can't be done by ordinary citizens for several reasons ordinary so citizens that you can do mix and match the court in one order has recorded this this is on the basis of the submission okay. of the government yes, on the basis of the government submission the court in one interim order has recorded this i'll show i'll show now mix and match can't be done by ordinary citizens in fact lord even if i wanted to find out which companies have purchased electoral bonds there are 23 lakh registered companies in india 23 lakh i would have to scan the of course every company is obliged <laughs> to uh, to file the returns of Uh, their income and expenditure in the ministry of corporate affairs website and by paying some fee i as a citizen can also access that website of that company to see what is the income and expenditure of that company so theoretically it is possible for me to find out which company has purchased electoral bonds worth how much purchased and given but i won't know who have they given it to all that i will know is total amount purchased by them now citizen can't be expected to go through of course we have found out about some companies which i'll be coming to i'll give those examples which have purchased electoral bond because that can be seen from their disclosure to the corporate affairs but i can't be expected to find out from 23 lakh registered companies who has purchased how much electoral bonds but government can state bank of india knows and because state bank is owned by the government therefore theoretically my lord they can if they exert sufficient pressure on the state bank they can find out who has purchased this particular electoral bond because state bank has that information though they are prohibited by law from disclosing it to anybody by the scheme but they have that information and they also have the information as to which political party has encashed which electoral bond so state bank is the only authority which can do that mix and match, and match. <laughs> which can do that mix and match citizens can't do it and i am saying my lord that this defeats the citizens right to know about who is funding these political parties in fact my lord in a recent judgment the uh, central information commission has ruled that these six national parties are public authorities under the right to information act now unfortunately despite that judgment most of these political parties are not obeying that they are not appointing information officers which they are obliged under the rti act 
so that people can ask them questions. We have in fact filed a petition in this court on the basis of that CIC judgment as well as uh, the RTI Act as well as the fundamental right of people to know, etc., which is pending, which has been which has been separated uh, by this court. But I am pointing out that um, here uh, you have completely made mincemeat of people's right to in be informed about funding of political parties by introducing an instrument which today forms the bulk of donations to political parties. They are the bulk of donations to political parties today. This instrument. Then, my lord, uh, uh, 12 of the scheme says, huh? yeah, the bond can be encashed by only by an eligible political party by depositing the same in their designated bank account. So these are the broad salient features of the scheme that However, these are bearer bonds, and as I said, my lord, even the person who has purchased it may just hand it over to another XYZ, and that XYZ may give it to the political party, and therefore the political party can also turn around and say, I don't know who gave me this electoral bond. Somebody came and gave it to me. I don't know. In fact, I have been the recipient myself of, uh, <laughs> there was this register of the CBI director. Somebody came to my residence at night and gave me two volumes of the residence register, original register of that CBI director. And actually, I didn't know who is that person. There, there, there were these two people who came and gave it to me. But when I looked at the register, I could make out that this has to be original. Nobody can fabricate these kind of details. The time, date, car number, persons, and so on, visiting the CBI director. And on the basis of that, this court then ordered an SIT to be constituted because he was being visited by several people who were being investigated by the CBI at that point of time. But <clears throat> I'm saying that sometimes I get information from people whom I don't know. But I know that this is authentic information because I can make out by looking at it that this has to be authentic. 